and welcome everybody to this Fabric Espresso. I'm joined again by Bogdan for a final one on all the performance goodness we have inside Fabric. Now, uh, Bogdan, what are we going to talk about today? So last time we talked about the query optimization and how we decompose a query into tasks. Today we'll talk about query processing, how these tasks are getting distributed across multiple compute nodes. Polaris. Okay, Polaris goodness. Love it. Let's dive in. We were mentioning last time that uh, the query uh, optimizer is going to, to create a query plan which consists of multiple logical tasks. A task represents the operator execution over a cell. And I was telling you that the data cells are initially coming from storage and then the, the, the task is going to process them into other data cells that are temporary and pass these temporary data cells from one node to another. I was also mentioning that uh, a logical task is going to, uh, when executed over a last amount of data, is going to produce multiple physical tasks, multiple replicas of, of, uh, of that logical task. So um, again, let's see what happens when a query hits uh, the, 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 the SQL front end. Uh, we were mentioning that the query optimizer is going to decompose the work, but before decomposing the work, we have the centralized services that are running on the front end. We keep track of metadata, we keep track of pending transactions. We figure out on which snapshot of data we should execute the queries. So the centralized services allow us to select the current snapshot, to compile the query, as I mentioned, and to use metadata and statistics to estimate the cost and the number of nodes that are going to be necessary for the optimal execution of the query. Then, we start uh, uh, launching this task, multiple tasks on, on backend nodes. Each of these circles represent a backend nodes, and each of these backend nodes can run one or multiple tasks. And uh, Polaris is the distribution, the distribution of work across these multiple nodes, plus the communication channel that makes sure that the data movement operators are transferring data efficiently between uh, between these nodes. So Polaris, this uh, and the system for distributing work can do quite a few things. It can, for example, auto scale. It can dis uh, it can notice that. When we don't have enough compute power and uh, Polaris can decide to increment the compute power by adding multiple nodes. Once multiple nodes are added to the system, the tasks that are getting executed can be, uh, can be distributed across multiple nodes and this is how Polaris scales up automatically. Polaris can also scale down. So as soon as some of the tasks are complete or maybe we overestimated the number of nodes, we can scale down and reduce the amount of compute that is paid by the user. So basically, the, the customer doesn't need to worry about how many nodes are in the back. We have an autonomous compute uh, scaling system that is entirely transparent to the user. Going further, uh, Polaris may detect that, you know, one of the nodes is failing and it is a, a system designed to have fault tolerance. It, it's built in. Once one of the nodes is failing, the tasks on those nodes are going to be moved to, to other nodes and the, the customer is going to get a high reliability of the execution. Uh, now, as, uh, as we move tasks around, we may detect that only one of the nodes has a hotspot. And once we detect a hotspot, we can shuffle some of the tasks around. We do automatic load balancing to maximize resource utilization. And if after uh, dealing with a hotspot, it is sustained and it keeps being uh, uh, hot over using uh, resources, we can eventually decide to, to scale out the, the, the system. So all in all, the customer doesn't need to care how many nodes are getting used in the back. We are trying to do uh, all the work that is necessary to optimize the query execution time and to give you really good performance. So uh, now uh, as, as Polaris is getting uh, multiple requests, it uh, uh, multiple queries that are dealing with more or less the same data uh, are what we are constituting a, a workload. So um, a workload is a set of queries that are leveraging the same compute nodes and the caches that we are building on those nodes. Now, Polaris has the ability to use different compute uh, nodes to run in parallel multiple workloads. And as you see here, it doesn't matter for Polaris whether data is coming from a warehouse, from a lake house. It operates on top of data directly from, uh, uh, from one lake. And uh, as each workload has independent compute resources associated with that workload, it means that we have the ability to separate entirely, for instance, the query workloads from the ingestion and ETL workloads. And we can even support workloads that are coming from a completely different uh, uh, compute cluster, from a completely different workspace pointed to the same data. And this is how Polaris gives us uh, automatic uh, uh, separation of storage of compute and the ability to leverage best resources on top of uh, whatever data we have in uh, in uh, one leg. And uh, this is in uh, in very, very uh, short how we do the multi-node distribution in the new Synapse SQL. 
awesome. That shows us basically how that works internally. So how those tasks get across those different computes. Also how we now are handling that workload management, which is a big difference with dedicated SQL pools. Now, if this was the first time you're visiting our channel and you like the content, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, if you have any questions about this video, make sure you write them in the comments. and we'll definitely get back to you. If you liked the video, just give us a thumbs up. As always, from the Fabric Espresso team, this is Stan and... Bogdan, thank you. Th thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.